News in the world of Enshrouded. Y'all please excuse my voice today. I'm going to the doctor this afternoon. But this is a pretty big one, and so I wanted to get out the highlights. King Games is at it again. Not only doing bug fixes, but taking a lot of feedback from the community and integrating it into the game. I jumped in game real quick and checked some of it out. Looks like they have a lot of good adjustments here. I did notice my settings needed to be changed a little bit for the visuals. It seemed a little laggy and weird looking. I might play with that a bit more, but here we go. Added fixes for a few different crashes, of course. Wells now have water again when discovered. When wells are freshly placed in the player base, they still need a few minutes to fill up. Wells now show a UI element indicating that they are currently refilling. Fix several NPC and animal pathfinding issues. For example, finding and using beds that have been made more reliable. And pathfinding issues when going up and down stairs have been improved. Added new bathroom furniture pieces to the Albany Summit's furniture set. Added more visual variations to the fell melee soldiers in earlier areas of Embervale. So they're still going back and adding earlier content. Rain is now stopped by roofs more reliably. Drying off after spending time in the rain is now faster when the player is sheltered. Fixed a few issues with quests not unlocking their steps correctly. Reduced the frequency of rainy weather, but when it rains, it will rain a little bit longer than before. Even for November, this was too much. <laughs> quests that required the retrieval of villager souls could previously be blocked by player bases at the quest location. Now that quest is automatically solved in such cases. The quest for taming goats can now be completed by taming frizzy goats. Fix an issue with recipes not showing the unlocked event, even though they unlocked correctly. Okay, changes and improvements to villagers and animals. Increase the range in which animals look for a bed and food. NPCs were taught to properly sit on chairs and toilets to minimize accidents. <laughs> I like their sense of humor. There is now a small randomization for when NPCs decide to go to bed. Before, when fast traveling to the player base, it could be observed that everyone was heading to bed at exactly the same time. This should make bedtime feel a bit more natural. Likewise, when returning to the base, not every NPC will jump out of bed immediately at the same time. Fences and walls now better contain animals. Farm animals are no longer attacked by bees. Cats are no longer alarmed by nearby rats while being tamed. It's a fine balance between believable cat behavior and good gameplay. That first cat could be annoying because of those rats to get. Cats and dogs can no longer be hit by players with lightning channel attacks. Shame on y'all. Be hitting dogs and cats. Lowered the height of the yak feeder props so that both parents and calves can get to their food easily. That's good because their head was going through the side. Lowered the unnatural high speed of resource protection from animals. At the same time, increased the maximum stack sizes of produced resources. As a side effect, this should lower the maintenance requirements for animals. Yeah, because there was really no need to feed them unless you were going to collect right then. There's no benefit to it. Bait stack sizes are now larger. This should also help against accidentally punching wildlife while trying to throw the next bait during the taming process. That was definitely something to watch out for. You'd be starting all over. Animals now realize more reliably when beds are placed in their vicinity. The rate at which animals can have babies has been unified for all animals. In the future, we'll balance this again and better explain the reproduction rate, especially in case they will vary between different animals. When taming has been completed, the UI now shows the success in a more comprehensible way. I'll have to look at that. I thought it was pretty obvious before. Picking up bait while animals are eating it now correctly interferes with the taming process. No more using that workaround. Like enemies, animals now have less keen senses when it is raining. This makes it easier to hunt or tame them under bad weather conditions. I like that they've added that. That's realistic and really cool that it's incorporated. After being tamed, animals now also roam around when the player hasn't picked them up and dropped them off at their base yet. Fix the Beastmaster player skill. Befriended beasts can now be ordered to follow the player again. I like this one. The first mouse click after tabbing out and back into the game will no longer trigger an in-game action. Previously, trying to regain focus on the game window could too easily lead to accidental weapon attacks or building actions. True. Fixed an issue where the game failed to gather the information about 
available happy villagers when the player tried to level up the flame in a player base that is not the one where the villagers are living. Crafting assistants can now offer the full range of recipes even if the crafting tools are placed in a different base. That's nice because I was thinking we're going to have to build everything twice. Fixed an issue that villagers would suddenly wake up in the middle of the night only to get back right in bed afterwards. Just because it's happening to us, it shouldn't also happen to them. <laughs> It'd be funny if they got up, went to the bathroom, and then went back to bed. Villagers without beds are sleeping on the floor now, as they should. Villagers no longer have trouble getting to bed when they approach from the foot of the bed. That's good. I wonder if some of my people are still sleeping on the wrong floor of the house. Like the second story instead of third. Villagers no longer physically block doors or narrow stairs. That's because now you just walk right through them. They might still stand there, but you can just walk through them. The tutorial about needing happy villagers to level up the flame no longer shows every time the flame menu is opened. Fix the villagers can have multiple beds assigned in some cases. Fix some situations in which villagers or animals would interact with props through walls. One example was that they'd teleport through a wall to sit on a chair. So it's really super complex to add all of these moving people around a base that's different voxel base in every single world. And I was amazed they were doing as well as they were right off the bat. And here we go, they're already making improvements to make it better. Fixes for new biome content and gameplay. Reduce the sturdiness of silver and obsidian ore. While the yield per node is the same, it now takes less time to gather it. It was seriously a long time to get silver and obsidian, especially silver. The UI for coldness and protection against it has been reworked after player feedback. This is a good one. The coldness meter now shows the encroaching freezing of the player. So you can see it up in the top left cold corner when you're cold now. While exposed to extreme coldness, this meter can only ever go up. Underneath the cold meter, the level of coldness protection is displayed and the current remaining time before hypothermia sets in. The time can change rapidly depending on food, consumables, equipment, torches, nearby campfires, and other factors. But now at least we have a clue. We're not just guessing like, oh, well, wham, I'm suddenly freezing. Added more information about the frost protection from the flame at level 8 to the flame upgrade scene screen and to the quest journal. Fix an issue with the display of the hypothermia warning that prevented it from showing up at the center of the screen initially. Increase the time before hypothermia sets in for players without any kind of cold protection from 10 seconds to 20 seconds. A little bit of a grace period is nice. Fix the ice lighting visual effect could appear at the character's feet even when they weren't touching the ground. Sliding down slopes now prevents using ranged weapons. I don't like that one. It's fun. Uh, why'd they take that away? I don't like it. Added the previously missing area of effect damage to the spell Ice Bolt 2. Improved visibility of snowflakes when using DLSS. Some stuff with sound effect fixes. Added a few more enemies to some empty areas in the Albany summits. They switched the visuals of, of the two granite roof blocks so that both fit better to the name and I icon of the items. Updated the visuals of the Bellfire Braziers. Some more visual effects of items around the world and on armors. Increase the size of the big spider. It's meant to be a chunk. So if you're freaked out by spiders, be ready to get more freaked out. Increase the damage to the stun bar of the boss when hitting it by parrying its own projectiles. Remove the loot from the defeated vultures during the boss fight. I wonder why they did that. I really like this one. Added a subtle self-glow to the windows that look like they are made of glass. It's not perfect yet, but better than com being completely black during the day. Exchanged an incorrect perk on the horn daggers. They now have correctly increased cut damage when upgraded. Improve the illuminated pumpkins for a prettier glow. Fixed an issue where the milk dropped from certain enemies as loot was mistakenly cooked already. It's not that kind of a cozy game. That was pretty cozy. I didn't know that that was an issue, but it makes sense. Fix comfort category setting for tapestries and the granite throne. And improve the UI overlay when the boss is unlocked. Lots of miscellaneous fixes. I'm just going to hit the highlights that seem more important. Fix one of the shroud roots that didn't clear the shroud in the vicinity after being destroyed. Improve the level of detail for some mycelium covered props. Added keyboard support to the split stack submenu. 
fixed an issue that could lead to the game freezing when tabbing out of the game window, slightly increased performance of rendering clouds, they continue to work on making the game look more beautiful, fixed the saving of the time of the day when quitting the game, I like that one, I wonder if people were cheesing with that, creating and playing a new world with a character that has the quest progression mode set to missed quests, no longer blocks the first door in the Cinder Vault start cave. Drastically increase the health for practice targets and dummies. That's good because the other day I hit my, my practice target once and it was destroyed. Player tombstones were tweaked to minimize the risk that they can't be looted properly depending on doors on other large pops nearby. Selected quests are now deselected in the quest journal when they have been completed. Some of the fixes that they've done are very specific little things that could happen and they improve performance of player bases with many villagers and large roaming distance set good because that's probably going to happen a lot and the amount of data exchanged between servers and clients has been reduced this should help in situations where low bandwidth caused multiplayer issues previously and they thank us greatly for our reports helping them make the game better I like pretty much mostly all of these changes and I'm ever impressed with the work that Keen is doing on Enshrouded. Let me know your thoughts below. Leave a like and comment to feed the algorithm and consider free subscribing for more Enshrouded. Until next time, happy gaming.